Hello and welcome back to Financial Madness where we look at all things personal finance. In today's video we'll be focusing on pensions and more specifically the best strategy to get a tax-free lump sum from your pension when you reach retirement. I'm Kozan from Financial Madness helping you be better with your money. Bow. So let's briefly rewind and go over pensions as understanding the fundamentals is needed to figure out how the tax-free lump sum concept works. So for most of us, we will have a private pension. These are the pensions that are separate from your state pension. Most private pensions will come in the form of your workplace pension that you automatically get enrolled in with your employer. Alternatively, you can have a personal private pension that you can open up yourself to help save for retirement. Now, pensions are a great tax vehicle to help you save money for retirement. In summary, the amount of money you put into your pension is subject to tax relief. So you get to recoup that tax relief in your take home pay while still contributing the full amount to your pension. So pensions are a great a tax efficient way to save for your retirement. However, when it comes to withdrawing from your pension, this is when our best friend, Mr. Taxman, comes knocking on the door looking for some income tax. Simply put, Putting money in a pension equals tax relief. Taking money out of your pension, you may pay income tax. Now, the amount of income tax you will be charged, if eligible, will be subject to the income tax rules of the tax year you are realizing that pension income. And there are actually strategies in how you can take out your money for it to be the most tax efficient way, which we'll touch on later. However, there is one tax incentive that you do get at the point of withdrawal, and that is you can realize up to 25% of your pension pot as a tax-free lump sum. This applies to defined contribution pensions, which is what most of us will have, and defined benefit pensions. To best explain how this works, let's go through an example. But before we do that, how about you um, hit that subscribe button? Now, there are some terms and rules that you need to be familiar with before jumping into examples. So first up, when we talk about pensions, we have to talk about the phrases crystallized and uncrystallized pension pots. Crystallized is the money that you have realized and withdrawn from your pension and converted it into income or a lump sum payment, and this is subject to income tax. And crystallized, as you may have guessed it, the money that remains in your pension and has not been converted into income or a lump sum, and is therefore not subject to income tax. These terms and concepts are important to understand when we go through our example shortly. You will notice that in my example, I have split the money across the following buckets. You have your uncrystallized pension, a crystallized drawdown account, tax-free cash, and your gross income. So your uncrystallized pension is where your pension sits as you are saving for your retirement. And it can't be accessed until you reach the pension age, which currently is 55 and soon to be changing to 57 from April, 2028. Your drawdown account is the proportion of your pension that you have crystallized and is subject to income tax. Remember, we do get a 25% tax-free lump sum, so effectively 75% of the amount you crystallize is only subject to tax. Remember, crystallizing is when you withdraw money from your pension to be used as income. Whilst your money is in the drawdown account, it continues to be invested and has the potential to grow in value as well as reduce. This also applies to the money sitting in your uncrystallized pension pot too. We also have the tax-free cash, which is the proportion of your pension that you have crystallized, but is not subject to tax. And this is usually 25%. And finally, we have our gross income, which is the amount you earn before paying any tax. Now that's all cleared up, let's look at a particular scenario and look at all the key ways we can withdraw from our pension. Let's say in retirement, we have £100,000 saved in our pension. In year one, we want to earn 25% in gross income. And from year two onwards, we want to earn £20,000. Once our pension pot gets below £20,000, we just withdraw the amount remaining and close the account. Spoiler alert, you can probably tell this strategy means the pension isn't going to last long. And that is correct, and this is a terrible strategy. But it does mean our example will be short enough to get my point across. We are also going to assume that our pension continues to grow at a constant rate of 5% per year. The income tax rules remain the same throughout, and I'll be taking this current tax year's rules as an example. And finally, we do not have any other forms of income. Now that we are armed with our assumptions, let's look at what we can do. Starting with example one, which is to take the full amount of tax-free cash in year one. To help break out these concepts, I've got a trusty spreadsheet to help us understand what is going on here. As you can see here, we have the categories I've mentioned earlier. We have our uncrystallized pension, we have our crystallized drawdown account, the tax-free cash, and our gross income. 
I've also provided how much tax we can expect to pay and the impact on our take home pay as well. So going back to example one, when we want to take the full amount of the tax free cash in year one, let's look at how this plays out. So in year one, we do nothing. We're just about to reach our retirement age and currently our pension is worth 100,000 pounds. In year one, remember, we want to earn an income of 25,000 pounds. And we do this by crystallizing our entire pension pot. So as you can see here, our 100K has been split with 75K going to the crystallized drawdown account. Remember this account means the amount is now fully taxable and the remaining 25K is taken as tax-free cash, which goes straight into our bank account. That means our 25K is entirely funded by tax-free cash. So we pay no tax. So our take-home pay is also 25K. In year two, we would want to claim 20K as income. Our crystallized drawdown has increased by 5% to 78 pounds 750 and at the end of year two it has a balance of 58,750 and because this amount is taxable and is above our personal allowance of 12,570 we have to pay 20% on the remaining amount which comes to 1,486 so our take-home pay is 18,514 and we continue this for years three all the way to year five Remember, our drawdown increases by 5% every year and we are withdrawing 20K as income, meaning we also pay the same amount of income tax for each year too. In year six, our drawdown balance is 5,208. So we take the whole lot and close the pension account. Even though the money is taxable, it is below our personal allowance threshold and therefore we do not pay any income tax. So once we've added that in and we total up everything in this scenario, the amount of tax-free cash we earned was 25K. Our gross income is £110,208. The total amount of income tax we had to pay was 5944 This means our total take-home pay was £104,264.49. Now let's look at scenario two, where we only crystallize what we need, which would be 25K in year one and 20K from that point onwards. Let's go through this example and compare it to scenario one. So in year one, we crystallize only 25K from our pension pot. 25% of this will be tax-free, which is 6,250, and the remaining will be held in our drawdown account at 18,750. So if we want an income of 25K, we know 6,250 of it will be tax-free, so the rest will have to come from our drawdown account, which is taxable. The amount is above the personal allowance, so therefore we will be subject to 1,236 pounds in tax, making our take-home pay 23,764. In year two, our uncrystallized pension pot grows by 5% from 70K to 78,750. We take an income of 20,000 pounds. 25% of this will be tax-free, so 5,000 pounds, and the rest of it will be in our drawdown account at 15,000 pounds. As we want an income of 20,000 pounds, we know 5K of this will be tax-free, so the rest will come from our drawdown account, which again is taxable. 15K is above the personal allowance, so we pay 486 pounds in income tax for that year bringing our take-home pay to 19,514. And we continue to do this from years three all the way to year five. Please remember that our pension is increasing by 5% each year, and we pay the same amount of income tax for each year too, because we continue to withdraw the same 20K as income. In year six, just like the previous scenario, our pension balance became 5,208. So we decide to take the whole lot and close the account. 25% will be tax-free, which is 1,302, and the remaining 3,906 sits in our drawdown account, and this money is taxable. As we want to take all of it, we know 1,302 is tax-free, and even though the remaining is taxable, but because it is below our personal allowance threshold, we pay no tax. So our take-home pay is 5,208. So if we total all of this up in this scenario, the amount of tax-free cash we earned was £27,552.12, which is more than scenario one. Our gross income is the same at 110208 but the total amount of income tax we had to pay was 3180 which means our total take-home pay was £107,028.49. So this shows that if you are crystallizing and withdrawing what you need from your pension, this works out to be more tax efficient than claiming the entire tax-free lump sum in one go. It also works out that you can actually get more than 25% from the original pension pot as tax-free cash. In scenario one, we achieved 25%, but in scenario two, we achieved 27.5% tax-free cash. 
But obviously this is all based on assumptions as in real life it is really hard to know how much you would actually need from your pension. Plus changes in pension performance as well as depending on your circumstances there will be instances when larger pension amounts may be required which works out to be more beneficial to you. But I would highly encourage you to make your best guess of how much you would actually need from your pension and obviously plan that your pension also lasts for a large number of years not just six. Then this should be the strategy that most of us should aim to do. Now that we've identified what the most efficient strategy is, let's look at things to consider. So the first one being is whether you also earn any other forms of income on top of your private pension income. So in the earlier scenarios, we came to understand that how much you withdraw from your pension will affect how much tax you pay. In our assumptions, we assume that this individual was receiving no other incomes, so any tax calculations can be based on the amount received from their private pension pot. However, if the individual did receive other incomes, this would have to be factored into how much income tax a person would have to pay for that particular year. For example, once you begin claiming on your state pension, if you are eligible, you could potentially be earning up to £10,600 per year from the state. That alone eats up about 85% of your personal allowance, so good pension planning is needed. Another thing to consider is inheritance tax. Since pensions fall outside of your estate, they are not subject to inheritance tax. And I'm talking both from a crystallized and uncrystallized account perspective. If you want to learn more about inheritance tax and how to prepare for it, please check out this video here. There are of course other options to obtain income from your pension. The example I provided is more attuned to a defined contribution pension and using a drawdown method. The other methods you have is to take out 25k as a tax-free lump sum and use the rest of the money to purchase an annuity and get a guaranteed income for life. If you would like to learn more differences between the two, check out this video here. For those on defined benefit schemes, the way the tax-free lump sum is calculated is based on a formula provided by your pension provider. Once you do claim on your tax-free lump sum, your pension benefits will reduce as a consequence, but this should all be explained by the pension admin team in your workplace. And lastly, please do seek professional advice. Pensions are a key part in your financial journey and it can get confusing. So I would encourage you to seek professional help as and when you need it. Cool, so that is it for this week's video. Please do let me know in the comment section down below if you do have any questions and remember to like and subscribe. Bye. <laughs>